This morning, I was scrolling through Twitter and I came across this really nice tweet by Adam Argyle. Adam Argyle is a DevRel at the Google Chrome team. And what he shared was this code pen. In this code pen, you see that he created an animated noise and he said he did this only by using CSS. So I immediately was curious because I've always used SVG masks to create noise, not even animated, but just noise in general. So I was thinking, wow, how did he do this? And for this, he combined two very smart things. He combined a gradient, a regular gradient, as well as he animated it with the CSS add property. And I thought instead of going to do a rebuild today, it would be very fun to break down what he actually made. So this is the code pen that Adam created. And when you first look at the code, it might be a little bit confusing. And that is why I thought it would be useful to do this breakdown, because there's quite a few things going on here, especially also the add property, a new CSS feature that you might not even have used yet. So let's take a look at the code that's in here. Firstly, you see the add property definition, which we'll be taking a look at in a second. Then there is a keyframe animation, which does something with the CSS variable. Then the animation definition, as well as a mask. And if we then go further down to the text, you see that there is a gradient text layer where he has a background gradient, which apparently is the text background color. So let's take a look at how these different things tie together as well. Also, you notice that Adam uses the add layer, which is also a new CSS feature to define CSS cascading layers. Definitely check the video linked up here where you can see what cascading layers can do for you because I have a whole video about that as well. So let's start by undoing a few things here before we start redoing them again. First, let's just remove the animation for a second. So everything becomes static and it's not animating anymore. So this noise animation, if we also quickly have a look at the HTML for a second, you see that it is an H1 which has a text noise, as well as the diff, which has a class noise. And that diff wraps the whole text. So that means that if we look at the CSS here, we have the noise diff, which is around the text. And that has a specific animation. For now, we're going to ignore it for a bit because we're going to break it down first. Then there is also this mask on here. So let's also remove that for a second. And then you see that we suddenly have a gradient text, similar to my last week's video, where we also added a nice animation based on a background gradient on a text. Because if we scroll down a little bit, we go to that gradient text. We notice that Adam does an add supports check to check if the OKLCH color scheme is used. That is, again, something that's new. The OKLCH color scheme, you can compare it to RGB or HSL color schemes. But the OKLCH color scheme is a more vibrant color scheme that uses a lot more of the capabilities of modern phones and laptops, being able to show, again, more vibrant types of colors. So this is not really part of that demo, but it's also something you're going to encounter. And you might think, what's he doing there? But the main thing he's actually doing is rendering the background image, which is a linear gradient that goes to the right and then has two colors. And based on if the space is supported, he also adds in the space there to use that new color space, because that's also why you see that there is an empty variable if it is not supported. So then it's just regular RGB color. But he's using the background image to create a gradient text. And then he uses a background clip to make sure that the background only clips to the text. Because if we would also remove that, you would simply see that we get a gradient square because that's the background. And then this background clip simply helps to clip the background around the text. And that way, you are able to see the background only surrounding the text and it suddenly looks like the text color is a gradient. So that's pretty much the first step. If you do that, you have a text gradient. And then how is he able to turn that linear gradient into some kind of nice suddenly? And that's where the second step comes in. For that second step, he uses a mask. And this mask, if we quickly uncomment that again, you see that that mask immediately adds in the noise. But how exactly is that working? So let's go ahead and define this lines variable here for a second and set it to 12 pixels, because then we can see a little bit better what's happening here. That mask is a repeating radial gradient, which means that it's a gradient that repeats circles. And in this case, because it's a circle at the center, it goes from the center and then it goes outwards and it fills itself up. And what he's then doing is he rendering a black color at a specific distance, which is where he uses the lines variable for. And then he actually renders a second part of that gradient, which is an empty space that you actually see inside his gradient. And that way you get a black color and then a transparent gap and a black color and a transparent gap. This, to me, at least, was nothing new yet. However, then he suddenly converted this into a noise. And I thought, how? 
how is this working? Well, let's change this lines number to a smaller number, one pixel, for example. And then you still see that it's like a line of one pixel and it keeps on going. But as soon as we go a little bit smaller, you suddenly start to see that we get some sort of distortion here. And if we go even smaller, then all of a sudden this will start to turn into a real noise. And that to me, that was so crazy because how can you turn a radial gradient into a noise? But it seems to be the case that if you go small enough with that radial gradient, the browser suddenly isn't able to render it as nice radial gradients anymore, but it will look like some sort of noise texture. And that is honestly super, super interesting. And now the next thing you still might be wondering is, okay, why that lines variable? Where is that coming from and why is that needed? Well, that brings us to pretty much the final part of this puzzle. And that is the part where it gets animated. Because this lines variable, if we go up a little bit, you see we have the keyframe animation where he then animates it at 50%. He animates it to a different value. Because if we go a little bit further up, you see add property where he defines the initial value of the lines. And I will explain the add property in a minute as well. But you see that those two values are different. So it's a constantly changing value between one of the two. And then he goes to the animation where he calls this animation, sets a specific duration and lets it continue for indefinitely. So what's pretty much happening is that it's animating between these two different values. But if you see me changing those two numbers, you see that the noise moves around. And that principle is exactly what he's using to make it seem like the noise is really animating. Now, the thing is, you can't really animate a CSS variable by default. You need to somehow tell the browser what type this CSS variable is. So here we are suddenly almost introducing a TypeScript kind of functionality to CSS. Because if the browser knows that a specific CSS variable is a color, or in this case, a pixel value, then it can animate it from one point to the other point. But it needs to know what type of that variable is. And that is finally where the add property comes into play. Because if we scroll up again, you see that the add property is defined here. And what it actually does is it defines a variable with a specific name. And inside it, you can set an initial value, which is the value that it will have, even if you don't define the lines variable on that element. But then the other important thing is the syntax part. Because this is what the browser in this case tells that it's a uh, width height value, let's say, or a, uh, they call it a length value, which is kind of confusing in my opinion, but it could be anything like a pixel value, a percentage value, a real number, and the browser detects which the, which value it really is based on the extension you add after the number. So in this case, the browser now knows that it's a pixel value and it's able to animate them. And these CSS data types, they're also, again, something that's pretty new to CSS because they're part of that add property spec. But you can see that there's a lot of different property types that you can set. You can even have real string or a URL, or you can set it as a number, a percentage angle, resolution, there's so many color, so many different things in here, which then tells the browser what type of variable it is, so it can animate a from and to value. And in this case, if you want a pixel value, then you're going to use the length, which is a dimension that refers to distance according to the doc. And again, this name is a little bit confusing, but if you click on it, you can see that it's for values such as width, height, margin, padding. These values is what it can be used for. So that is why if you go back to the app property, you see that it's defined as being a length property. And now we use this app property value, the browser is suddenly able to animate it by only setting a 50% point of 0 0.0012 12 pixels. And that way it animates it from the 10 value to the 12 value and then back to the 10 value. And this way, because also it's going in an infinite way, it keeps going back and forth and it will suddenly animate the noise. So let's re-enable that noise and let's remove our inline definition of lines. And by doing that again, you see that there is a nice animation happening and it looks like an animated noise. Also, the final interesting thing is that he added a duration of 3600 seconds here. And that all has to do with the speed that the noise moves at. Because if I would make this a three second animation, then you see that all of a sudden it's moving a lot faster. So depending on the values that you use as the from and to values of the noise, you can probably get away with using a different speed here. Um, but it's either a combination of these two values that need to be perhaps a little bit smaller or larger and the duration of this animation. And that is all there is to it to this noise animation. I hope this breakdown to you was helpful because when I first saw this, I saw there's many new and interesting CSS techniques in here. And it's such a a great combination of these kind of things that I thought it would be valuable to do this breakdown for you. So you can also see how I dive into code snippets like these to learn and understand them. And on top of that, 
if I do these breakdowns, I also learn a bit more, <laughs> which also helps me if I need to teach it to you again. So that is all I have for you today. I hope this was a valuable video to you, and I hope to see you in the next video.